with Stuart and today we're going to be trying some water splash or water drip photography. Now for this you're going to need a few bits and pieces. So we'll start off with the camera. You're going to need any camera um, that you can have full manual settings on and um, that's very very important so any entry level um, camera or even a professional camera um, whatever you've got you should be absolutely fine and you're also going to want to use an off camera flash so I've got a trigger here and that's going to fire my Godox AD200 um, if you don't have anything like that there is a link in the description to um, a budget flash with a trigger that you can pick up for around about £106. Now the lens, you can use a um, kit lens. I used a kit lens on this when I um, was having a, a go at it and um, it worked absolutely fine, just had to crop in that little bit more um, than I wanted to. Um, but if you have something like a 75 to 300 mil um, lens, that should be absolutely ideal, or even better still if you've got a macro lens. I don't, and today I'm going to be using my Fuji 90mm f2. The uh, reason I'm using this is because I bought it earlier on in the week. Um, it's a beast of a lens, and I would really die to try it out. Um, so I'm using that today. You're going to want a few other bits and pieces. So you're going to want a... Um, something to hold some water so I've got a glass baking tray and um, you're also going to want water as well and then you're going to need something called xanthan gum I picked this up at the local supermarket it cost me £2.65 and I found it in the free from section and this when mixed with water just thickens it up ever so slightly so it gives you um, a better chance of um, photographing um, water crowns and, and things like that. You can do it without, I tried it without and it was absolutely fine, I just wasn't getting the crowns that I was looking for. So something like this will help a lot. Um, you're also going to need um, something to use as a backdrop. I've got a book here um, where all the pages Pull out. I picked this one up from the works for around about £3. They're absolutely brilliant as, um, as backgrounds. Or um, I've also used my um, daughter's paintings. She loves paintings, so she loves to see me use them in, in my photographs. And you're going to want something like a freezer bag or a sandwich bag and a pin as well. Now you're going to fill the sandwich bag or the freezer bag full of water and you're going to hang it above your tray. So you're going to want something um, that you can hold the bag of water up with. Today I'm going to use a backdrop kit and also some heavy duty clamps um, to get that on there as well. Now if you're looking at doing um, pictures of um, collision photos, so when you get um, the um, water drop hit the water come back up and then you get another drip of water hit that um, they create some amazing images this is not the tutorial for you um, you can only do that by spending a, a, a bit of money on um, some kit like a, a trigger and a drip machine um, it may be something I cover in the future um, but not at the moment um, so you can get some great shots so we're not going to get those collision photos um, that you've seen about. So right, we're going to set everything up and get into the shooting stage. Right after I've had a drink of tea. And I'll do anything without a drink of tea.
Right, so I have everything set up here. Got my camera on the tripod um, with my flash trigger and my flash off to the right there. I have my tray of water which I've um, filtered almost overflowing. I wanted to get that as high as possible so I don't see the rim um, too much at the back there. And I've got a background stand set up which has got my um, bag of water um, with the xanthan um, gum mixed in uh, which I've clamped to the top. And to get the drips going I've just used a pin which I've just stuck into the bottom of the bag there. So um, my camera is set up, I've got it as low down as possible so I'm almost shooting um, straight forward. I'm probably pointing down ever so slightly um, but that's the way I like it and I'm just making sure that once it drips the, um, the top of the drip is not going out of the top of the frame and I've got myself a little background set up there. So um, the camera settings I have at the moment I'm on 250th of a second. The reason I'm at 250th of a second is because that's the um, sync speed um, of this camera um, with the flash. Most cameras run between 180th and 250th of a second. Check your manual, whichever your sync speed is, is the speed um, that you want to set. Then I've got this set up at um, f-stop of f8. You're going to want to be around the region of f8 to f16. Um, I've got this set at f8 currently. And then I have an ISO of 200. Um, so we get nice um, clean images. We're not adding any extra noise into that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to focus. So I'm going to bring a pen and I'm going to bring that or a pencil, something like that, just into where the drip is hitting the water. And I'm going to use that as my focus point. So I'm now currently focused. Um, that was on autofocus, I'm now going to switch it to manual focus. You can manual focus if you prefer, um, but whatever you do, you switch it to manual focus afterwards. So every time you press the shutter button, it doesn't alter um, your um, focus. So my flash is currently switched off. I'm going to take one picture, and what I'm looking for is a completely underexposed image, which is virtually completely black, which that one is. So I have, I'm going to switch my flash on now and this is where the magic is going to come in. Now the flash is pointing mainly down towards my backdrop there and bouncing off the backdrop and creating a nice reflection on top of the water and um, some of that light will also be hitting um, my drip as well. And um, I've done a couple of tests of this and my ring light that I'm using to illuminate this for filming is affecting the image ever so slightly um, but um, I shall do some extra photos at the end um, after I've switched that off. So um, what I'm going to do is my flash is now on and I want that as lower power as I can get. The lower the power the shorter the flash duration and that's where the magic comes in. If it's a short flash duration it's going to freeze um, that motion. It doesn't matter what your shutter speed or anything is on, on your camera. Um, well, it does a little bit, it, you know, you don't want a long exposure. Um, but with, with me shooting at 250th of a second I'm using that light to freeze the motion, not the um, shutter speed of the camera. So I'm going to switch that light on there, and that's at 128th of a second. And I'm just, so 128 power, and I'm just going to take a couple of test shots just to check the exposure there. And for me that's a little bit too dark, um, I'm just going to increase the flash power um, a little bit. I'm going to go to 64th power. And again, just grab a couple of shots just to check my exposure there. And um, that's a little bit better. If you wanted to, I could bring my um, ISO up a little bit. I'm going to put it to ISO 400. And again, just grab 
a little test shot there and that's probably a bit too bright so I'm going to come down to ISO of 250 and again just one quick test shot now that's pretty good I'm quite happy with that as my exposure so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my camera onto um, rapid shooting mode and because my flash is at quite a low power um, there it should recharge pretty quick and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for those drops to come and then I'm going to hold my finger on and get a few shots I'm going to go through those if your flash um, depending on what you're using um, if it's not recharging um, quick enough um, it's just going to be a bit more hit and, hit and miss for you um, but that, that's pretty good for me I'll try a few extra try and get some more of those out what I'm looking for is a drip hitting the water and coming back up or crowns as just as it's starting to come back up that looks pretty good like I said my back this has been affected um, by my ring light I'm going to change my background a little into a different one it's always good to have a few backgrounds have a play with this and see what you can get there's some pretty cool ones there Quite nice. Yeah, I like that. I really like that. To be fair, this is probably slightly too bright, so I'm just going to go to F9 and grab a couple more. That's quite cool. Yeah, I'm I like that. I'm going to change my backdrop a few times. I'm going to switch this um, light off um, that I'm using for, um, for illuminating the video and I'll see what results I can get. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, be sure to subscribe to the channel and um, hit that bell for notifications of future videos. Our videos come out every week um, on a Wednesday and if there's any um, topics that you would like me to cover make sure you leave a comment down in the um, description below. Anyway, thanks for watching and ta-ta for now.